This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Out There, our first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro, and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Out There. Search today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today's show with some great news for anyone who has complained that the global EV market doesn't have enough small, lower cost electric vehicles, specifically in North America. That's because this week, Fiat officially announced pricing and specifications for the 2024 Fiat 500e, a vehicle that's been on sale in Europe since 2020, but hasn't been available in the US and Canada since the previous variant ended sales there in 2019. Specced for North America with a 42 kilowatt hour battery pack, the 500E has an EPA approved 149 mile, 240 kilometer range, plus an onboard 11 kilowatt charger and up to 85 kilowatt DC fast charging. It's not going to be the longest legged, but at a starting price of $32,500 before incentives, it's hitting a spot few other cars can. Euro NCAP has just published the last of its crash test results for 2023, and in it, there are plenty of all-electric models representing. First up is the Volkswagen ID7, which managed what Euro NCAP says is one of the best overall scores recorded this year. It earned five stars. The much more expensive Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV also earned itself a five-star rating, but lost points for, quote, lack of robustness, end quote, in its centre airbag system. BYD had two cars tested this time around, the BYD Tang and BYD CLU, both of which earned full five-star ratings, and for which the BYD CLU earned full points for motorcycle AEB. Kia's EV9 earned itself a five-star rating, as did the Xpeng G9, although Euro NCAP does note the G9 had issues with seat belts and pedestrian head protection. Finishing out the EVs on parade, the Smart No. 3, which earned itself five stars, and the VinFast VF8, which sadly was let down by its restraint systems and earned just four stars. I know we brushed through all of these quickly, but but Euro NCAP has the full results on its website for those who are interested. The world's highest mileage Tesla Model S has just passed 1.9 million kilometres, about 1.2 million miles. And as Inside EVs pointed out this week, that's been made possible thanks to some replacement parts. So far, the car, which lives in Germany, has received four battery replacements and is on its 14th motor. But it is also an early 2014 model not known for its robustness. That said, that kind of distance averages out to about 300,000 miles per pack, far better than a Tesla Model Y we heard about this week that's being used as a rideshare car. It's now on its third battery pack in two years, and it's part of a growing trend we're hearing from all types of EV owners that are saying their cars need warranty battery pack replacements. That said, battery replacements are still reasonably rare, but they are coming more common as more EVs age out. If you own any of Volkswagen's ID badge range of electric vehicles, you'll know that Volkswagen has been promising V to G capability for some time. This week, that became officially possible when Volkswagen flipped a switch for all Volkswagen ID models with a 77 usable kilowatt hour battery pack and Volkswagen ID software 3.5 or higher. While you will still need to have a charging station capable of by directional power at home, Volkswagen says the vehicle to home functionality should help customers keep the light on when there's a power cut. Given how Volkswagen has been pretty open to home automation projects, I'm expecting we'll see some really awesome examples of people using their Volkswagen EVs to keep things running very soon. 
While Tesla officially began delivering its Cybertruck last week, Elon Musk has been very clear that initial production volumes will be pretty low for the next few months. This means that for those wanting to get a Cybertruck, the wait is far from over, unless, that is, you're willing to go above and beyond with a Foundation Series variant. Tesla is reportedly reaching out to Cybertruck reservation holders to ask them if they would like the opportunity to become a Foundation Series owner, named after the book series by Isaac Asimov. The downside of this? In order to secure one of those 1,000 limited places, you'll need to be happy paying not the $99,900 of the Beast Mode variant, but closer to $135,000 if you want all the bells and whistles. Consumer Reports published its latest range test results this week for a range of new EVs on the marketplace and, well, for some models, it made for a sobering read. Testing a whole slew of currently in production vehicles with a full battery pack at 70 miles per hour on a test track, Consumer Reports discovered that while some EVs, like the Mercedes Benz EQE 350, BMW iX M50, and quad motor Rivian R1T far exceeded their official range ratings, some models did the exact opposite with the Lucid Air Touring, Tesla Model S Long Range, and Ford F 150 Lightning extended range all significantly falling short of their EPA range ratings, the latter by a massive 50 miles. According to Consumer Reports, Audi, Volkswagen, Hyundai, Kia, Nissan, Subaru and Lexus models were the closest to their EPA figures. As we are now into December, we're starting to see sales figures drip in for the previous month, and one of the first to publish was Ford. And while Ford's overall vehicle sales were down a half percent, its EV sales were substantially higher, with the brand setting new sales records. Collectively, Ford's EV sales were up 43.2% year-on-year, with a total of 8,958 electric vehicles sold by the brand in the US. Of those, just under one half were Ford F-150 Lightnings, with the model exceeding 4,000 units sold for the first time since production started. Of course, these sales figures are nothing compared to Tesla's vehicle output, but it's a step in the right direction. Sticking with November sales figures, both Hyundai and Kia enjoyed record-breaking sales for November, with Kia recording its best-ever November, with EV sales more than double what they were this time last year. Hyundai, meanwhile, with more electric vehicles on sale, enjoyed a 216% year-over-year increase in sales during November, with EGMP-based electric vehicles now accounting for 5.4% of the brand's sales volume, up from just 1.9% last year. As we and others in the industry have noted, while many brands are slowing down their EV sales, Hyundai Kia is going from strength to strength, and with more models coming, shows no sign of slowing down. During the Cybertruck delivery event last week, quite a lot of emphasis was placed on how robust and rugged the vehicle's stainless steel exoskeleton was. But just one week after the reveal, doubts are starting to rise among everyone from insurance agencies to body shop technicians and even DeLorean enthusiasts over just how easy the cold rolled stainless steel will be to repair. As reported by Inside EVs this week, while many DeLorean fans, another car built with stainless steel, are expressing caution over how easy Cybertruck's flat panels will be to repair after an accident, some auto repair specialists note that Tesla does tend to give out fairly decent repair training, so it might be easier to replace entire panels than just try to panel beat them to perfection. And that, though, as some insurance industry experts warn, might not be something that insurers will like, and they may not be looking to fork out extra for that practice. Watch this space, though, because I'm pretty hopeful Tesla already has all of this planned well in advance. If you watch this channel for 
any length of time, you'll be very familiar with the common talking point that we settle on, affordability of new EVs. This week, JD Power confirmed what we've been saying for a long time. One of the primary reasons people aren't buying new EVs as quickly as they might is because of a lack of affordable models to buy. Granted, JD Power's latest consumer survey noticed that people really want to buy affordable electric compact SUVs, but affordability is up there alongside concerns about charging infrastructure reliability, time required to drive and charge, range per charge, and inadequate winter performance. While some of the reasons quoted can be dealt with reasonably easily, the price one is something that we think is going to take a while to sort. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out Avarian Buyer's Guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get charging at home. Follow the link below and start your journey today. When it comes to traditional automotive design, British sports car manufacturer Morgan is one name that always comes up. After all, its three-wheelers look almost the same as they did back in the 1900s. But this week, Morgan unveiled a classic three-wheeler with a twist, the latest all-electric prototype it's been working on. Called the XP1, it's still very much an engineering development vehicle built over the last 12 months on the Super 3 platform. It looks the part, and while there's very little shared regarding its technical specs, Morgan notes that it's reduced the coefficient of drag of the vehicle by 33% thanks to a new front end. That said, don't get too excited because Morgan has teased an all-electric model before, only to decide not to produce it. I really hope this one makes it all the way to production. And finally, we're often told by shouty types in the comments section that they'll not buy an electric vehicle until it can do a massive number of miles or kilometres per charge. But this week, our next energy from Michigan showcased that its latest partnership with BMW resulted in a BMW iX that was capable of driving more than 606 miles, 973 kilometres, on a single charge on the WLTP test cycle. That's far more than most gasoline vehicles of a similar size can manage. What makes this feat possible? A dual chemistry battery pack called the Gemini that combines an LFP battery pack for daily driving with a super high energy density pack that's made for occasional use that offers up to 450 miles of additional range as and when required. I cannot wait to see how far those naysayers say that they want to be able to travel per charge before they'll buy an EV. It's getting silly. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it is high time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual for our penultimate live show of the year. And don't forget to check out our other awesome content, including the very latest videos from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon. Bloomfield, kakite. See you next time.